Welcome back to another episode of Sound Pals Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review, and I'm here with my friend Tuli. Say hi, Tuli. Hi, guys. And today we're going to be reviewing Mystic River from 2003. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. The lives of three men who were childhood friends are shattered with one of them has a family tragedy. I'm going to start off with my pros. We have director Clint Eastwood. Not only did he direct the movie and did a good job, but he also composed the music used for the movie. And I got to say, I like the music and I believe that it would fit well with the movie. Not that it's over the top or too soft, that it gets lost in the movie, but it actually fits really well with it next point is the acting we got the talent of sean penn who plays jimmy we got tim robbins who plays dave kevin bacon who plays sean we got Lawrence fishberg who plays detective powers we even got marcy harden who plays dave's wife laura linney who plays jim's wife we even got minor talent who has short screen time for example we got emily ross who a lot of people know from other shows who plays katie we even got people like spencer clark who plays silent ray harris who doesn't even speak in this movie but a lot of people know this kid from different movies most uh, recently we know him from unbreakable and glass let's go back to the main characters we got the scene where Sean Penn who plays Jimmy where he discovers his daughter is dead and all the cops have to hold him down as he breaks down with emotions of hate anger sadness all at once and this scene is so powerful that only Sean Penn can bring all these emotions out at once and you can see it and the way they filmed this scene not only from one point of view but from a crane shot and the emotions that he lets out at one time is just overwhelming to me it's amazing i mean i can't have another actor in this position except sean penn i cannot see another actor going from being nice to being a cold mob killer especially the scenes where he's at home when somebody brings him the beer and he's putting him in the cooler and then he goes from being kind of sad to like being kind of tame to going off at him you know like it's just this like transition that he does so well from one spectrum of emotions to another other actors would just it's like a switch but would Champagne would I see him more as instead of a switch I see him as a dimmer he goes from one side to another but slowly and transitions so easily I mean that it's so amazing to see him work on as an actor on screen the next person is tim robbins who plays dave his acting was amazing he plays a damaged dave so well what i mean by this is that he sells that he has been mentally damaged and what i mean by this is that that he couldn't function in society as normal as other people but he does it just to protect his son we see him in the beginning of the movie get into the car and things happen to him basically he gets raped by these two individuals who convince him to get in the car we, we don't see this happening visually on screen but it's suggested what i've always come to say it, you don't need to show people it happening on screen you can suggest it and people will come up with the idea and what scares people more is you don't show him the monster but the fear of the monsters will scare the people what i mean by this is you don't have to see the imagery you can suggest it and they'll come up with the idea and that's going to scare them even more this is what this movie does they they don't show us that but they show us the aftermath and how Dave behaves and by that we can come and put the pieces together and be like wow if this is the aftermath of what happened I can just imagine what he went through this leads me to the character's backstory what I mean by that is that each of the characters feeds off each other for example we see that the backstories kind of slowly reveal as the detectives progress through the case for example we see that Jimmy's backstories come into light as he is connected to Simple Ray and that he is connected to his daughter through the weapon and then back to Sean who is a cop in his field work connected back to Jimmy then it's Jimmy connected back to Dave which is back to the past when they were kids everything leads back to the beginning of the car scene and you can do this with any part of the movie and connect it back and it leads back to the beginning of the movie now let's talk about some shots of the movie I felt that Dave's car scene at the beginning of the movie kept coming up in different ways for example the first time is when he's a kid of course he gets into the car with the two individuals 
Second time is when Katie gets in her car and her boyfriend scares her from the back of the seat. That's another reference of the time when Dave was a kid. The third time is when Detective Sean and Detective Powers come around to ask Dave questions. I think this happens twice and we see him slowly come in a car and they turn around the block. You see the look on Dave's face like, oh, here comes the car. And it's a, it reminds him of the car from the beginning. So it kind of gives him this fear, but at the same time is the fear of authority coming, coming around to question him. The fourth time is when he is finally picked up by the Savage Brothers at the end. He even gives a look when he turns around in the back seat and looks out the window. So, so to me, this is even the motif that's throughout the movie where it's this placement of this individual card ride that is throughout the movie. And it's basically placed in retrospect Dave's and throughout everybody's storyline signifies everybody's downfall. We see it in Katie. We see it in different characters. Now, moving on to my cons, uh, things I would have changed in this movie. There is a few things I would have changed. First of all, is the the length of the movie. I would have changed it. It's a bit too long because it's uh, about two, two hours, two and two hours and 17 minutes. So I would shorten the movie. I would have made Tim Robbins, Dave, have nightmares to show that he was more disturbed and more damaged than he was and that would basically leave me to convince me that he might have had more reasoning to have hurt katie because throughout the movie i did not suspect him so if he would have had nightmares then i would have said maybe he had triggered something and he forgot he went on a rampage and you know he could have you know it, it's a reason uh, i'm in doubt that he maybe could have because throughout the movie i never suspected dave i would have explained a little more about sean's issue with his wife because throughout the movie he just picks up the phone we see the wife on the other end uh well we don't even see her we just see her lips they try they want to move but she doesn't say a word i would have probably explained a little more uh, throughout the movie like little flashbacks little pictures here and there of him looking at her and having a little flashback but to me his wife was non-existing in the movie so I kind of would have either taken it out or added more so that's one way I could have shortened the movie the ending what can I say about the ending I would have probably either taken out the ending or uh, explained it a little more the ending when Jimmy is talking to his wife in the room during the parade, I would have taken that out. I would have just ended the movie as Jimmy and Sean talk about Dave. And Sean simply says, maybe we all got in the car that day. I mean, the whole point of this movie is about three people, you know, that day in the beginning of the movie. I could have cared less about Jimmy's mob history and his wanting to take over the neighborhood, you know, as a big time baller. That whole situation is not existing to me in this movie. I don't care about that. Um, and his for his wife to say, you're a king and everything. This is not a mobster movie for me. This is a movie about innocence being lost for Dave, Jimmy losing his daughter, basically Dave's wife losing a husband and maybe Sean losing his wife. But for me, just to have that conversation at the end when the wife is like, you're the king and you're, you know, that's what I tell your daughters, you know, you'll, you'll do everything and everything's going to be fine. I don't understand that. With that, I'm going to pass it on to my friend Tuli and see how he saw this movie and what, what grade he gave this movie. I do feel that some of the things Sal said about the film matches how I feel about it in terms of what I like and what I don't like. Starting with what I liked, again, the star power of the cast. You know, Sal already mentioned a lot of the people who were involved in this. Very recognizable names, so star power is there. That's totally a plus for me. Although it started off slow the movie that is it eventually hooked me in as i was trying to figure out what was going on from kevin bacon's character side because he was playing one of the fbi agents alongside Lawrence fishburne just trying to make sense of it because just like say i never really suspected dave as being the one who killed jimmy's daughter i was just trying to piece things together but at the same time it was a little frustrating as well because the movie wasn't giving me enough clues to sort of make sense of it all yet you just had to go along with what kevin bacon's and Lawrence fishburne's character were going through to get the information 
solution to solve this riddle. It seemed like they could have really just come up with anything in a sense to have the sort of ending that they have. Like, oh, it was just this random kid in a sense that ended up killing the daughter. But of course, they have to have tied that to Katie's boyfriend in a way because it was the boyfriend's younger brother who knew about the gun. And of course, the gun was owned by the father who they thought ran away. But it was Jimmy who killed him and, you know, dumped it in the river. I think the movie was trying too hard to just connect a lot of the key characters in this movie to give you that kind of moment at the end. It was like, oh, so everything comes in full circle somehow because of what Jimmy did to Katie's boyfriend's father that karma in a, if you want to look at it that way came back to bite him and took away his daughter for him to having to take away another person's family member and because of that now the son of Dave doesn't have a father as well and it seems to be this cycle that just happens I think in a way what I would have liked this film to have done is either be on one end of the spectrum or the other and that whoever was guilty and to me I think I'm looking at Jimmy here in the sense because he he ended up killing, I wouldn't say somebody who was innocent because Dave did murder somebody in the film, but it just wasn't Katie. Despite the person who Dave murdered wasn't a innocent person himself because he was a child molester. But, you know, he killed Dave for not the reason he intended to. You know, Jimmy have been part of the mob and wanted to, and growing very impatient about the FBI agents not being able to do their job properly despite how much effort that we're actually putting into it I actually felt sorry for Sean and, and Witty the FBI agents because Jimmy was giving them a hard time I can understand the frustration coming from Jimmy because it was his daughter but for Dave to have died the way he did given his past how he was the one who got in the car as a child and the things that happened to him and them not really addressing that after the fact to the level that I, I would feel it deserved because of how dark that road went for Dave and how he was never able to recover from that. I think the film was trying very very hard to justify and give the three characters between Jimmy, Dave, and Sean equal time on screen that it did not excel in any one of their storytelling to really understand that this is the overall message of the movie. I'm like split between oh Jimmy lost his daughter. He's seeking vengeance. That's his thing. Dave is trying to recover from what happened to him as a child but in the end he became the easy target because what happened to him and his state of being and then Sean being the FBI agent he was just doing his thing he was doing his job they throw in that little thing about his wife and how they kind of went their separate way and at the end they just reunited again I feel like each of those stories did not have that foundation that made me feel very compelled to be on any one of these people's sides had this story just been like, for example, from Jimmy's perspective. And then you meet Dave and Sean after they're all grown up. And then whether or not Jimmy's actions at the end corresponds with what he wanted, so be it. At least I was there along for the ride. I could accept whether or not Jimmy was going to go to jail for what he did or for him accepting what happened to his daughter and just move on with life. I could say that for any one of these three characters, Dave, just follow him, how he has been after the tragedy he went through and how he's coping with life. But then he gets thrown into this shuffle of being the suspect of the murder and just follow him around or just follow Sean, a guy who when he was a kid seemed to have been probably the most rebellious of the three and how he turned his life around in a sense and became more disciplined and became a an FBI agent because he wanted justice. He wanted to do things right because he came to realize that his set of actions that day caused Dave to go down the road he he did. So the way they portray these characters and how their story progressed they were all good I'm not saying that they were bad they were good but not any one of them to me excelled to that degree that made me feel oh that was very very thought provoking and I feel for this character a lot just like how maybe they portrayed to me how much Jimmy felt about his daughter I wanted that sort of feeling towards one of these characters at the end but it didn't and just like Sal I think the movie was too long in that retrospect because they were trying to focus on all these three characters with like an equal emphasis which kind of 
of worked against it because instead of focusing more on one character over the other, again, get me behind that character as much as possible. The movie, to me, seems to just try to balance it out between the three characters because they are supposedly to be the three main characters of the film, and they're even shown on the the main poster of the film as well. You see them. You see the reflection from the the river. Yeah. So I think the movie was too long for that reason. I felt like. And the ending, I totally agree with Sal here. I think the ending should have just ended with Sean and Jimmy talking to one another. And the way they shot it, as Jimmy was walking down that road, I thought like at that point, or not even at that point, but when Sean already met with Jimmy, that he already figured out what happened to Dave. And then as Jimmy was walking down the road, he already knew what was going to happen. And then just show like a police car or whatever, pull up with the sirens and the movie closes in credit. That's all I needed. But instead, you know, they had the scene with Jimmy and his wife and his wife trying to read it out with him that what Jimmy did was right and then they showed the parade where it was just it was so depressing because again it just brings back that cycle of tragedy because now Dave's son who was very very depressed sitting through that parade because his dad wasn't there again it's just this cycle of tragedy so I wish they would have just like conclusively ended on a mark that made me feel okay this cycle just needs to stop and somebody needs to stop this I didn't feel that the movie got to that message and if it did I I totally missed it. Other than that, I would say at the beginning of the film, the way they depicted the relationship between Jimmy and his daughter, it was there, but it wasn't like the movie searching for me in a way where they didn't need to do that much, but maybe show me a montage or show me another scene to get me to really feel for the relationship. Because here, it felt really one-sided that Jimmy was the one who really loved his daughter, but you'd never get this feeling that it was mutual. Like, yeah, you see Katie hugging father before she left for that that particular day but you just come to find out later that she was planning to run away and that doesn't make me feel that that relationship was mutual in the sense maybe if they had just shown another scene or give me the illusion that Katie felt that way about father as much as the father felt about the daughter despite what Jimmy would have done later to Dave in a sense I would have still been all right with that because I knew how strong the bond was between the father and the daughter so it just reminded me of the movie searching but I think searching did it a tad better in that retrospect overall I still enjoyed the film had they just taken certain characters and certain scenes out and some of the dialogue were a little tad long as well uh they could have gone to the point a bit sooner in those sort of conversations but overall i did like the movie and i would give the film a 7 out of 10 and recommend it yes i also agree with the relationship between jimmy and his daughter to me it seems like like you said searching did it better i would also liked it if i would seen more scenes between the father and daughter maybe jimmy sitting on the porch like he mentioned waiting for her and she comes home maybe after a, you know a night out at the bars with with her friends and jimmy was like there ready to like, scold her or something you know mad waiting for her and for her just to hug him and as a father loving father father automatically just say okay go on inside and you know go into bed and we'll talk about it in the morning or something or you have to open the store in the morning that's your punishment or something something you know like a father you know going easy on the daughter something that would tell her like yeah he's a loving father you know instead of this like oh i love my daughter and just showing us one scene and that's it i see that i understand that there's some things lacking in this movie but this movie it's way too long there's things that shouldn't be there like the ending to me that final scene where they're talking and saying when was the last time you saw dave and jimmy says i'll tell you where when was the last time i saw dave it was you know this many years ago and it was right there he was getting into the car driving away and that scene where the camera's you know recording and watching them and just the dolly shot going in reverse right there and then that scene just like how it was shot it was a perfect setup for the movie to end and for him to say for sean even telling him like are you gonna send dave's wife five hundred dollars now you know like i know what you did you killed him and jimmy just walking away and right there would have been the perfect setup for for sean to basically commit and say i'm not arresting you right now but i swear i'm gonna get evidence and i'm gonna lock you up like he said to the other detective if it's dave i'm gonna be the first one to take out the cuffs why not against jimmy do that say it in front of him jimmy could have just walked away backwards with his hands spread open and be like bring it on and then right there that's the end of the movie you know for me instead of going from there to the parade the parade was pointless my grade's gonna be the same as yours 
a 7 out of 10. I highly recommend this movie. I can see why Sean Penn won the Oscar that year for this movie. If it wasn't for Lord of the Rings, I'm pretty sure this movie would have taken the Oscar home. But like you said, there's things in this movie that are lacking that needed to be clear and stuff like that. So I guess that does it for this review of Mystic River. Please join us next time where we're going to review Battle Royale from the year 2000. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.